morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are listening. I'm Richard Murray, and this is the first episode in the series in Movies That Move We, I call Richard Murray's Corner. The goal of this series is to provide a talk on the oldest black cinema, cinema defined as film. I define, I define, <laughs> you may concur or not, black cinema as films that have a majority of black control or involvement in all aspects of creation. So in this series, when I say black cinema, I do not include things like video recordings of Porky and Bess, a white written story, or a film like The Wiz, whose script was written by Schumacher based on a play whose stage script was written by William Brown, another white person, you know, while both stage or film were primarily financed by 20th Century Fox, with no hate. And I, for the record, I support the Wiz stage play or film. I'm a fan of both, heavily. Okay, that's not the issue of fandom. It's about definition. The point is not to criminalize or oppose multiracial collaborations in film, but to focus on all or nearly all black collaborations in film in the past. I've learned in my experience, that white-produced art involving black people is usually different than black-produced art involving black people. I use Shuffle Along in opposition to Porky and Bess. Here is, um, in the transcript, a link to the talk on the film The Wiz or Movies That Move We. Remember to look at the transcript for the link again. Uh, I end this uh, segment with this irregular time series, Richard Murray's Corner, will focus on said black cinema, old as possible, and as much black involvement as possible. Okay, for the first uh, work, it'll not, it won't be an Oscar Michelle film, but a work entitled The Blood of Jesus, written, directed, co-produced, all right, co-produced by Spencer Williams. The other producer was a white man, um, a white Jew, named uh, Alfred N. Sack. He owned theaters and had uh, distribution deals. Remember, all films outside of privately made auto-documentarian films involving one subject made by, produced, or crafted by the same person are collaborative art projects. Always. You need other people to work on the film or produce it to get it to theaters or to handle the distribution for 99% of films in all humanity. All the woods together. Sequentially, why you need so much money on average? Well, now I will present the introduction to the film, Blood of Jesus. movie I chose for various reasons, artistically. The theme of the presence of the black Christian community, which at one time was nearly synonymous to the entire black community in the USA, in films involving black people, is clearly shown here. When you think about shows like Power from 50 Cent, or Sanford and Son, or films like The Five Heartbeats, or The Blues Brothers, the film heritage of mentioning the black Christian community in the USA when a black character is present, is embedded in black cinema itself, regardless of whether the film is black or not. 
It isn't a caricature by white artists applied to black people. If anything, a telling thing is how lesser the quantity of black Christian references are in modern film involving black people. All right, on to the... Now, daughter, you better lay down a little while. All right, Sister Jenkins, I sure will. Well, I guess I better be getting on home now, Sister Jackson. All right, Sister Jenkins. Thank you. Thank you very much. You welcome, child. You welcome. Well, Jackson, do you have it enough? Oh, uh, not much, Sister Jenkins. Just a couple of rabbits, that's all. Hmm, the big ones too, ain't I bet they sure is fat. Oh, they ain't so fat, Miss Jenkins. Uh, I mean, they ain't as fat as they look. Uh, they just look that way because they're in that sack. No, ma'am, them rabbits ain't that fat. No, ma'am. Boy, these rabbits bow to be fat heavy as this sack is. Let me see. Uh, oh, look out there, Miss Jenkins. Uh, that nail ain't very strong. It, it's liable to pull out. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'll, I'll hang it over here against the wall, you know. I guess I better be going, Brother Jackson. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Miss Jenkins. Thank you very much for looking after Martha. Thank you. You welcome, sir. Um, a link to the film and completion is at the bottom of the transcript. If you want to know why the black man was running, all I will say is jesting at the black Christian culture isn't untold or unheard of in black cinema. So whenever someone black tells you what shouldn't be done, please refer to this film. Now, another thing. The Showing of the Shoulder by Catherine Cavanis, uh, playing uh, Sister Martha Ann Jackson, was deemed in 1941 risky. Yes, in modern 2022 standards, uh, this is nothing. But in 1941, for a woman to show shoulders was deemed by some indecent, for others, tawdry. Okay, on to the next segment. What is it, honey? Whose hogs is in you got in that sack? Well, they, they are. Well, well, they ain't nobody's, honey. Them, them wild hogs. They don't belong to nobody. Now, Raz Jackson, you know they ain't no wild hogs in them woods. Every hog out there belongs to somebody. I guess you're right, honey. But you know, we didn't have a thing to eat in this house. If I hadn't been lucky enough to run up on them two shoulders, you wouldn't have had nothing to eat for supper tonight. Yes. Juanita Riley playing Sister Jenkins knows Ross is lying. But what is most interesting is how muted the black women treat the black man who was a criminal. In the 2007 film Pride, a character played by Kimberly Elise reacts so vibrantly when she discovers the character portrayed by uh, Terrence Howard was in an altercation with law enforcement and went to prison. Yes, Ross has stolen. He can't even keep the species of creature he killed the same in his storytelling, if you notice. But the black women didn't act like the world has fallen, which is a very modern movie trope involving black characters in cinema. Either we are not breaking the law to live better and overreact at the sight of the law being bro broken, or we are breaking the law to live better, and we are unconcerned with anything. You know, am I my brother's keeper, right? What movie is that from? <laughs> hint, hint, black director aided in financing by Clint Eastwood. 
Anyway, uh, on to the next segment. Remember in First Sunday when J.C. Morgan said, Jesus is looking at me, couldn't resist, but love the honesty in the action. Old gun, not unkept, will cause folk who don't have anything to eat can trigger like that. You know, I mean, a pure accident, but it's warranted. You know, it, it is unkept gun. And hey, you know, it, it's old, it's, un, it's not well used, you know, but he barely have any food. So I think it's fair. Well, all right. On to the next segment. I have seen Christian Heaven depicted in many films. I cannot, and I cannot recall one that had spirits walking up to the gates of heaven from earth. If you pay attention, the spirits are not flying, they are walking on the clouds to the gates of Christian Heaven. I cannot verify the following, but this scene was supposedly made from scenes from a 1911 Italian film titled uh, uh, L'Inferno, meaning The Inferno, from Dante, uh, Dante Alighieri. I watched the Italian film. It was very argumented to create this scene. You know, um, to the scene construction, don't take it negatively. If you are black, I, I think the message is interesting. The message is, even if our spirits, when dead, do not have wings, we can walk on clouds to get to heaven. And that is all right. I think it is a message about what the afterlife means to many black people then. The afterlife isn't a place of getting what you never had. The afterlife is a place of being free from enslavement, from restriction, from disability through human involvement. In parallel, the film L'Inferno is about punishment, you know, in many ways. So I don't know, there's an interesting contrast here. Well, all right, on to the next segment.
acting by Catherine Cavan is slowly dying at pieces. Well done. Take a look at the full film um, when you get a chance. But I hope you enjoyed the special effects. The angel is played by Regina Goldthwaite. Thus, she has wings. So it wasn't that black angels didn't have wings. But when black people go to Christian heaven, it is interpreted differently. Anyway, all right, on to the next segment. Road leads to the highway of life. There, at the crossroads, you will find that which you seek. The road to the right leads to happiness and eternal life. The road to the left leads to death, hell, and destruction. Be on your way, but walk clear of temptation, and beware of the hypocrite and the false prophet. Go. There she goes. You know what to do. Okay, Judas. Go ahead. Do your stuff. <laughs> isn't it? I didn't mean to frighten you. Green is my name. Judas Green. And yours? I know this film is old, but I would love if anyone can comprehend, for sure, the highway of light or life. It looks like a video of an urban city at night, which is so common. I love how the angel left no nonsense. It is all up to you. Simple instructions. Right is good, Left his bad. <laughs> Poor Judas. That name has been criminalized. I mean, and you look at Satan. <laughs> Judas Green, knowing both my parents' mothers, he would have been in trouble the second he said that to them. So they clearly evaded his machinations. Doesn't the angel sound like Felicia Rashad when she interviews people? Anyway, all right. On to the next segment.
Say, what is you waiting on? How come you didn't come on downstairs? Oh, uh, Mr. Brown, I've decided not to take the job you offered me. Uh, I think I'll go on to the crossroads. Listen, sister. I didn't pay Judith Green $30 for that dress you got on, for them shoes you got on. And if it's going to be the deciding done, I'm going to do it, and not you. Now hurry up and get on downstairs and get busy. The funny thing about the bar scene before this segment, outside the nice three individual acts, um, tap dance, acrobat singing, please check them out, okay, is not one criminal act is present. It is just black people hanging out in a bar. I mean, even Sister Jackson, who has been persuaded by Judas Green, joined the character Gambler, is wearing a cross. You know, the second spot where the segment comes from which is alluded to as farther down, is just that spot. The heater in the center of the dance floor suggests this is almost a converted shack, not in an urban nightclub. It's like in a real black communal setting, you know? Love the dancing. Um, notice no necklace with a cross on Sister Green now. You know, on a musical note, it is clear jazz side blues were equally deemed temptation music, unlike gospel in the black community at this time. I think that's an interesting point. Because we tend to think of jazz as like the kind of uh, corrupter, right, in the black community historically. But from here, it's clear that jazz and blues were equally deemed corrupters, right? I think one of the unique cultural elements is how the road to temptation isn't an extremely cruel path. At the end of the day, she is in a spot where women get money to dance and give a little nicky to men. The funny thing is all these people are spirits. You know, they're all are they near death or like death. You know, that's very interesting. Well, all right. On to the next segment. Run, child, run, bell behind you. 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 Run, child,
<laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art now on holy ground. your brains out with this rock. Stop. What hath this woman done? She stole my money, Lord. She, she, she ain't no good. She always robbed somebody. She robbed me once. She, she was a sinner. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Interesting perspective how the on the crossroads you have spirits like the gambler happily engaging in acts of theft and lying. The female thief spirit just successfully suckered the male spirits. Again, if you think of High John the Conqueror or the Devil's Daughter, I argue black people at the time of this film, and definitely admitted by this messages in the film, had created a secular mythology which treated tricking and the ability of devils to do good or be content. Less sinful and more a part of life or acceptable against the religious fur of black Christianity. That's thought. Move on to the next segment. Very much an interesting painting that the image of the black woman lying at the base of the cross slightly on the right side. You know, look at the sides of the stones those guys are going to use to stone her. I mean, let he use without sin cast the first boulder. <laughs> we do not see hell in this film or heaven. It can argue purgatory is what we're really looking at, which means the spirits in the middle are in limbo. It's interesting, too, because, you know, we don't think of limbo a lot. And when we think of a film, it's really straight to heaven. There's such a large focus on limbo in this film. I think that's underrated. Especially when you compare uh, more uh, later later films in history. All right, on to the next segment. Is you all right, honey? Yes, Red. I'm all right. I'm going to get well. Why did they stop singing? I like to hear them sing. 
Sis Jenkins. Sis Jenkins. Sis Jenkins. Look, Sister Jenkins. Look, 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 there she is. Look at her. See? She's all right. She's going to get well. Children, the good Lord. The news is coming. The news is coming. The news is coming. The news is coming. And I don't want to leave me behind. The news is coming. The news is coming. The news is coming. And I don't want to leave me behind. Well, well, well. The blood of Jesus has the ability to return someone from the crossroads of the spirit world after proclaimed dead in the living world, but before a soul makes a choice at the crossroads, a la purgatory. Like the film Body and Soul um, by Oscar Michelle, linked in the transcript, please look at it. The first film for Paul Robinson, uh, the theme of black women traversing between worlds is common. An interesting note. The body wasn't removed immediately after the sheet was put over the head in the film, which makes sense. People didn't move the proclaimed deceased immediately to the ground of the fire, you know, as you had to spend time to dig a hole if you wanted to bury, you know, and it wasn't space to just put them in an ice box as in modern times. Well, this is the last segment, so please share your thoughts and any other notes, and I'd love to discuss with you. Be safe.